We had the final of the Chessable Masters yesterday and it really was an incredible match. So to give some context here, Ding won the first part of the match when they played the day before. He won the four game mini match. So he was ahead going into this final day. So Prague had to win the four game section to then take it into Blitz playoffs. So the first part of the job for Prague was trying to do that and he won a phenomenal game with White, a really nice Magnus-esque crush. He just got an extra pawn, slowly nursed it down the board, won the game against the world number two. So job done on the first part, that took it then to Blitz playoffs. Now in the first Blitz playoff, Prague was absolutely killing Ding. Again, pawns ahead, dangerous outside pass pawn, also, Ding's king wasn't that safe, but he traded off the queens, then it wasn't so straightforward. Ding just managed to cling on, and so that took it to a second blitz game. And it's that game that I want to show you here. This was a decider of the match. We did have blood in this game. Now, the players get five minutes plus three seconds of move, so it's quick time control now, rapid thinking. Ding had white in this one. Let's see what happened here. So he kicked off with pawn to d4, we had knight f6 from Prague, pawn c4, Prague goes for the Nimzo with pawn to e6, now this knight came to c3, bishop b4, and here we have this e3 move, we've seen a lot of this system recently that Ding goes for from players like Wesley So, Ali Reza Firuzja. now after e3, Prague castled the king, and now we see a lot of bishop d3 in those other games. Here Ding goes for bishop d2, bit of a rarer move, and different moves here for black of course, but Prague goes for this very solid one, pawn to d5, going back into these queen's gambit decline structures. Now we had pawn a3, the bishop dropped back here, the king has now castled of course, so the bishop came out, drops back, but it's done its job, the king gets castled. And now this knight comes to f3, just to show you a difference here, in the Ali Reza game that he played against Lenier Dominguez, amazing game, I'll link that one at the end. He went bishop d3, knight g to e2, that whole kind of setup where you then get pawn f3 going and e4 later. What Ding does here is a different approach, a bit more kind of solid, knight to f3. And now Prague goes pawn b6, preparing pawn c5, also opening that light squared bishop in many of the variations. Now Ding captured on d5, the pawn recaptured, and he brought his rook to that newly half-open file, and here Prague plays an interesting move. We haven't seen any games with this move over the 2700 level. Normally players are developing here, say bishop b7 or rook e8, but Prague just goes c5 in one, a very ambitious move, immediately staking a claim to the centre, and best here when you run this with the engines is just bishop e2, but it's kind of solid, a bit stodgy, you know, white maintains a presence in the center. What Ding does here though is take on c5, and it really imbalances the position immediately, because after black recaptures, they've got these two connected pawns here, which are so-called hanging pawns. They're hanging in the board, hanging in thin air, there's no pawns supporting them, so that's why they're called hanging pawns. Now the pros of this is they take a lot of central space. They give your pieces outposts, for example. The downside is that they can be attacked, they can become weak. So that's the battleground now. So Ding develops here with bishop to d3. Prague now goes bishop g4. He pins that knight, really annoying pin. So pawn h3 from Ding, kicks back that bishop. And now again, if you want to stay solid, you can castle the king here. Possibly you have to even drop back with bishop e2 at some point, but Ding's really going for it now. He wants to fight with the white pieces. He goes knight to e2 here. So he's coming into f4, attacking that bishop, but he has now left the protection of this knight with his queen, and instantly that one's chopped off. The pawn recaptures, so it shattered that pawn structure, but Ding's now going for attacking chances. As we can see, he's opened up that g-file. And now the most accurate move for Prague here was actually playing knight c6. And it's an important one to recognize this because one of black's key ideas is pushing pawn d4 soon. So this leaves the queen open to support that push, plus the knight does. So that was slightly more accurate. 
but instead the knight came to d7, still a reasonable move, but white has advantage now. So Ding now plays bishop to c3, hits that beautiful diagonal, keeps an eye on the d4 push, rook to e8 was now played, and here Ding actually just castles the king. I mean, you can go rook g1, that kind of stuff, but he wants to be a bit more solid first, get his king safety sorted, then maybe bring a rook to the g-file. And now best for black was actually queen b6 here. After knight f8, which Prague played, there was actually a nice shot here, which Ding missed, of bishop to b5. So you pressure this rook and it's got nowhere to go. So you'd actually be forced to hop back if you don't want to lose an exchange. But then bishop c6, hits your rook in the corner. After it moves, you simply lose a pawn. So this whole variation is actually really annoying for black. But okay, Ding missed it. It's kind of hard to see a move like that on the queen side when you're so focused on attacking on the king side here. So instead he goes knight g3, he's eyeing this f5 square, the knight now came to g6, knight f5, the bishop dropped back to f8, opens the rook, defends the king here, and now bishop back to b1 here from Ding, he opens up his queen, eyeing this pawn, but now great move from Prague, he just plows on anyway, he goes pawn d4, and this is actually a pawn sacrifice, a double pawn sacrifice as it turns out, so you can't live with that thorn on d4 cramping your position. So that one was captured by Ding, best move. But now look at that gaping weakness on f4. Really beautiful positional idea from Prague. So after the captures, he doesn't take back. He now goes knight d5. No time to waste here, bringing that knight in and opening up the queen, of course. What does Ding do? He takes a second pawn. So black is all in on this kingside attack now. Two pawns down, you have to make this work. So queen g5 check from Prague. The king came to h2. Now this rook came to d8, more firepower in the attack. Lined up against the queen, the knight's moving away. So queen a4 was played, and now Ding would love to switch that one over to g4, defend his king, but bang. Knight d to f4 shuts out the queen, and look at that h3 pawn. Very, very weak, the queen is coming. So this one is forced, rook to g1, so that after the queen attacks the pawn, then you get rook g3, holds the weakness, but this whole way of playing actually gives black an exchange now. So knight e2 from Prague forks both those rooks, but this one slides across, excellent move by Ding, because now after this one's captured, which Prague played, the rook can recapture, and you're still holding those weak points, these weak pawns around the king. But after takes back there, now we had the invasion of this rook, coming down on e2, pressuring the f2 pawn, but really nice now from Ding, very calm move, bishop to d4, defends this pawn, and shuts out this rook from coming down anytime soon. And now Prague goes a bit wrong here, so he had to keep mixing up the position, keep bringing pieces into the attack. He should have gone knight to h4. Now it's a very difficult move to see, because you open up the rook down the g-file to attack on g7. So white could crash through, hits your queen, then there's a discovered check coming, but there's this resource of knight takes on f3 with check, after say king g2, well then you can jump back and check, king f1 hits the rook, and then you can chop on g7, now rook or bishop could recapture, let's say for argument's sake the bishop takes, well now there's a couple of different decent moves for black, you can actually hop the knight back to g6, or you can play this one, takes on f2, this actually forces a draw on the spot, then you could check, king f1, or g1 even, and there's different good moves, rook d1, knight f3, but this would have been Prague's best way to play, jumping that knight into h4, keeping the attack going around the king, but he didn't play that, it's very hard to see. Instead he went rook to d2, pressures this bishop once again with both of the rooks, but now Ding starts to stabilize. Bishop to e3 also hits the rook. Now Prague should take on b2 here. I'm not entirely sure why he didn't, other than he's getting low on time. So instead he dropped back into d5, he hits this knight, hit by both the rook and the queen, only defended here. So Ding has to defend. How did he play that move? Well, I'll show in just a moment, but I'll quickly pause to say I hope you're enjoying this video. 
Do hit that like button if you are, let me know, leave a comment if you want to see any future games, and do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. So the move played here was a really interesting defence by Ding, he played rook to g5. And I say interesting because now he gives this pawn when he plays like this, but this is what he had planned, bishop e4. He now hits the rook and the queen, and the only way to not just lose that rook, go down and exchange there, is to play queen d1, because now if the bishop takes, you win this one on a4. So we didn't have that one, we had the queen capture on d1, then the rook took back, but the problem with this whole variation is now pawn c6, Ding's got that dangerous queen off the board, Prague's on defensive mode now, look at that pass pawn. And here it's really tricky for black, low on time. Now you need to do something like rook to e8 to pressure this bishop, then move the a-pawn, possibly even move the a-pawn straight away. But instead rook c8 was played, looks so normal to come in front of that pawn, stop c7, but then you drop a7. And now Ding's got three connected passes on the queen side, this is really dangerous. So Prague went pawn f6, he kicked back that rook, this one now slid up to d2, pressures both of these pawns, and now this one was pushed here. Don't take this one, you blunder your rook from afar. So instead here we had knight to e5, comes in, pressures the c-pawn, but pawn b5 defends it. And now what is black to do? It's such a tough position to play. We had pawn g6 threatening that knight on f5, but now the bishop dropped back to e3, hits the rook on d2, and here Prague just blundered. He was absolutely exhausted, both players were, Ding was up till 5am, Prague was up till very late as well, plus he had exams, plus playing the day before, so it's amazing the standard they still brought. But he goes king h8 here, stepping away from the pin of this rook, preparing to capture the knight, but just completely forgetting about his rook on d2, he should have moved that rook away. So now he does capture on f5, but now it's all over. Here Ding doesn't even recapture the pawn. He goes bishop d5, looking for a sneaky checkmate on g8. So this bishop developed. Now pawn f4 was played, kicks the knight. We had pawn to b6, and this is the big problem here, of course. So captures on f4 with the knight. The bishop chopped off. Ding can just simplify here. King h1, pawn h5 now, gives the king a bit of room. Pawn a4, king h7, and these pawns are just steamrolling down the board as we can see. So this one now came to a6, look at those monsters on the 6th rank. Bishop e3, rook b1, rook d8 now hits the bishop, and Ding didn't even move it, simply pawn a7, game's completely gone, Prague resigned. So an exceptional final, and Prague really showed his quality, impressed the whole world to be honest, that a 16 year old could go toe to toe like that with world number two, Ding Loren, and he almost won the match. Fair play to him, brilliant contest. I can't wait for the candidates to see Ding back in action. If you enjoyed this video, do hit that thumbs up, let me know. Consider subscribing to the channel, and if you want to see the Ali Reza Firuzja versus Lenier Dominguez Perez game, click here. Thanks very much for watching, see you soon.